Hi, Sharon Durbin Graves, Painting with Acrylics 101.com. Welcome to my studio and let's have fun learning about practice today. Hey, we're going to talk about hinges and practice. A hinge on a door is a little thing this big. And yet that hinge, when you move the, open the door, it makes it possible to open the door and, and it can move a big door. It can move a gigantic door depending on the hinge. So practice is the hinge. It will is what will move the needle in your art. So if you're not happy with your art, this is where you need to start. You need to start with practice. And I'm going to show you some of the ways that I practice. Um, and and um, well, one thing I, I do is I get new colors. I need to know what they do with each other. So I make a little thing like this, a color chart. And I leave myself notes. How did I get these? I don't know why anybody would have this many reds, but for whatever reason I did. And so I, I wanted to see what they all did together to each other. So I, I put them all up here and then I made different ones and I tell myself which of these swatches was I using when I made this particular thing. I leave myself notes all the time. Um, I was going to teach a class on uh, drawing natural items and feathers was one of them. Well, so then I had to practice feathers, okay? just I'm just drawing feathers. I'm just trying to figure out. Okay, where's the curve? Which is one side sh one side shorter? One side's fatter. One side's got some darker lines in it. What does that look like? And doodling. I can sit there at the TV and just play around like this. Okay, I can. I, I'm just scumbling across to make this. I took a circle to turn it into a sphere, and y you know what sells this whole piece is this little line right in here. Everything else took much more time, but this little line right here is what tells you it's a ball sitting on a surface and there's a shadow. Without that little line right there, it would look flat. And here, here's something else fun. <laughs> uh, uh, this uh, this is a, just a value scale. I started with a pencil. I started out here light and I'm going across and I get, I put more pressure on the pencil to get the value. I'm just playing around. I'm just practicing for lack of a better word. I wanted to do something, but I didn't know what to do. Then I got a pear off my counter and I put it on a table and I'm, I'm drawing a pear and pears are hard because they've got these oddball shapes and sizes and nooks and crannies on them. Well then, Everything has creates shadows. So underneath it, every item has got a dark shadow where it's meeting the table. But then I saw this shadow over here, and then I saw this secondary shadow. So I was trying to, to teach myself all about the pair, but then all about the shadows. And this part came in handy because I knew how much pressure needed to be on that pencil. I practice my painting stuff on freezer paper uh, from the grocery store. <laughs> I just roll out a big piece, tape it on the table, and go to town. And so then I just paint. If I'm working on one, you know, a, a particular subject or topic, I'll fill that whole freezer paper up with that thing, so I can uh, know. So my hand gets the muscle memory and knows where to go when next time I want to paint a daisy, and I've got five sheets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, freezer paper full of daisy. My hand will know how to do that. I think people look at art and think, oh, well, they, it just flows out of them and it doesn't flow out of me. Okay, it doesn't flow out of anybody, particularly in the beginning. There's tons and tons of practice that went on. There's a, a learning curve and, and, and practice is involved. Just like playing the piano or shooting hoops, uh, pitching a baseball, hitting a baseball, one of the hardest things to do, uh, you know, throwing a spiral, um, any, any, and dancing. There's, I mean, ballerinas, they spend years at the bar with five positions in their feet and their hands and, and, and then all sorts of variations. But practice is what makes somebody go from a starter to an intermediate to good, really good, and a master. 
and, and it's a step up process each time. Okay, so here's some of my freezer paper practice. And, and I'm not kidding, it's a big piece of paper. <laughs> and so I was teaching a class on depth. And so I wanted to show some depth. So I was practicing on this paper. I was looking at what colors needed to be in the background and stuff. Well, then I had this one piece of paper out already and it was fall and I was going to be painting some pumpkins. I thought I'm just going to practice some of those. So that's what happened there. Here's my colors that I was working on for down in here. I don't care that I'm going to paint all over it. I it doesn't matter to me. It's practice. I'm not, this is never going to be anything important. This is just for me. And also on freezer paper, um, because it's so slick and I paint on the slick side because I'm trying, I don't want to fight the tooth on a canvas or paper. It's slick. I want to be able to see how that brush should move. And then when I get to a, something with more resistance, it I can make it do that. But if I don't know how to do it to begin with, then it's it's harder. So anyway, you'll get where your paint doesn't necessarily stick. Um, maybe there's too much water in it or, or for whatever reason. Uh, I don't care about that either. I want to learn uh, the, the shape, the how to move things. So I, I did, uh, I was, you would think after painting as many daisies and sunflowers as I've painted that I'd be able to do it. Well, I went through this period where I could not, could not do it. And I, I, so I, again, I pulled out a big piece of freezer paper on a great big table. And when I got done, I had this monstrous thing and, and a lot of them I didn't like. So I cut out the ones that I did like and I kept those. So this one here, and I write myself notes on things. Um, Okay, so this is, I'm telling, I'm reminding myself here that you need a different value. Um, everything needs three values, a minimum of three values. And so here, they're not quite enough of a difference, um, but I, I, was, I was good with the shape and stuff like that. Okay, so I really like this one. See, I just cut it right out of there. <laughs> and, and I save these and I go back and look at it again. Um, let's see. I liked all of these. They were all in a row. I cut those out. And I liked these. Okay. I cut those all out. <laughs> well, now here, here's, I can't believe I'm even going to show you this. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> I'm a relatively humble person, so <laughs> it, it, it's okay. I was trying to learn how to paint roses, and they... Are hard. I don't, I don't care how easy some people make them look, they're hard <laughs> until you get it. And once you get it, you know, I, I used to be, um, I was a dancer from the time I was three till I was about 18. And I can remember in acrobatics class trying to get a back walk over. I could not get that back walk week after week after week. I'm working on that back walk over. And then all of a sudden, one time I'm down there and I try to lift myself up and I feel the muscle that makes it go. And from then on out, I could do it. I had no problem. Was But finding that muscle and actually being able to make it work, that was, that was hard. It's the same thing with this. Okay, so here I am. I'm gonna show you my humiliating rose practice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I started out with the petals. I knew I needed this shape and I needed to be consistent. So I just one after another, after another, after another, after another. And so then I was, I didn't get anything here that I was at all happy with. This one's not terrible. <laughs> um, this one's okay. This one really is more like a peony and less like a rose. This one's not too bad, but I was practicing some Steve, limbs, some limbs and Steve's, <laughs> some Steve's and stems and leaves, she's trying to say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so, you know, and, and it is, it's just freezer paper. That's what I, I practice on that a lot. Um, so then, okay, I was gonna do, I did a, um, a beach scene with um, like a nocturnal beach scene with a moon and 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 in the foreground was all this uh, pampas grass type stuff and I, I thought I didn't know if I could get that grass to look right so I'm not worried about even the color it looks black but it's really a very dark hooker's green uh, deep uh, and so I was just trying to get the movement of 
these and get this thing up in here. <laughs> I just threw this in to help my little head and I threw some grasses down here at the bottom to kind of seat them but this is and it's on watercolor paper and this is from uh, I use both sides if I mean it's just practice so it doesn't really matter um, I was looking at uh, black that you buy and black that you mix and so what made the best I was trying to show myself you know what I like this is black right out of the tube this is black that I mix using all four of my darkest colors um, burnt umber ultramarine blue dioxys and purple and um, turquoise deep and when you look at it in person this is very flat and very harsh and this has some life in there and it's not all the same harsh black all the way across okay so another way I practice is uh, this is um, watercolor paper and I tape it to a board all the way around I have some metal cups some antique metal cups and when I was a kid we drank out of them all the time and um, they came with cottage cheese in them and they had a little paper uh, lid and and so then you kept after you ate the cottage cheese you kept the cup and you had that you know to drink out of so I love those cups and I they reflected each other so neat and so I wanted to practice to see how I could paint that so I taped my watercolor paper on a, a board I taped down the middle and I just made four little things and I kept setting the cups up in different um, configurations to see okay so what does the blue look like on the yellow and 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 what about the shadows underneath what about this shadow right in here where this cup sitting on this this here uh, so you you're learning to see you're looking at reflections you're looking at shapes you're looking at how things react to each other plus your colors how does this color react with that color so then I um, I was trying to learn how to paint uh, I love to paint uh, like ball blue jars and so I was learning how to do that so this is canvas uh, it's from a canvas pad and you just pull it off it's like you pull it off like a paper but it's actually like I mean it moves like canvas and stuff so I, I taped it on my board taped it up the middle and I was learning how to paint these jars and so I, I could, uh, if I chose, I could cut it up the middle there. I could mat these and, and, and frame them because they turned out pretty good. But, I mean, you can see the reflections in, in the glass. It looks um, pretty um, transparent, like you can see through the glass. The flowers, are they were fun to, to play with, to practice, because um, those daffodils are hard. So, now that I got have some more um, watercolor paper tape it to a board and I, I threw in tape in the middle and I was looking at trying to figure out okay so what background looks the best with what flowers this has more of a turquoise in it this is a, a darker blue this is a very dark uh, turquoise and green very dark and then this is a, a brighter blue I was practicing the flowers uh, the the petals um, getting something in front uh, creating some depth and looking at how the colors look together so I'm not just usually just practicing one thing there's usually two or three things going on and and again I've got my canvas paper here and I just filled it up with uh, echinacea blooms and daisies and and while they look sort of similar they've got a, uh, a little center and then they've got the spokes that come out they're different and so and I was trying to to understand um, what's the difference of the stroke to to create those uh, and here's another sheet of daisies I mean as I said I've painted a lot of and this is just some of the practice this is not anywhere near all the practice but what I, I you can see I wrote little notes on there okay so this says this angle is good I like that angle there okay uh, I used a flat synthetic brush and very light pressure back in here and uh, started from the outside and worked in on these and and so w next time if I mean hopefully I won't but you never know <laughs> uh, try to paint daisies again and my hand just won't go there I, I will pull this out and I'll read those notes and I'll oh yeah okay 
now I know where to go. Now, now I know what to do. But then I can practice in trees. I was I painted only landscapes for like the first seven or eight years uh, of, of painting. And so I'm looking at uh, pine trees, practicing some pine trees here. I'm also practicing distance and perspective. So this tree back here is further back and he's a little lighter, cooler uh, color than this one that's out front. This one here um, is there's a, you can see that where the branches come together. This one is a, a lighter color also, but it is darker than this one. And it is not as big as this one. Uh, and you can see it's sitting back and this one's sitting back even further. But you know what truly sells this whole silly thing are these shadows. <laughs> it tells you that the tree is in something. It's in the ground. And it tells you that the light is here. See, I put a, a little arrow on everything I paint to remind myself the light's coming from this direction. And then when I'm done painting, I put it on there with soft vine charcoal. I can just spray it off with a little bit of water and paper towel and, it, and away it goes. Um, but that, that helps me... You would think after 20 years I could remember where the light's coming from. I can't. So, so this helps me. I'll take any help I can get. So then I was looking at deciduous trees, the kind with the leaves. And so I wanted to practice my script liner to get all these little branches. Well, then, I, but I had to have a trunk and some bigger branches. And so then I had to put a little highlight in there to... I just can never leave well enough alone. So, so at any rate, there it is. And, and that's, um, that's the practice. And so, yes, I'm, I'm, I learned a lot. I, can, um, I know what I was doing. And I know what I was thinking. I'm trying to put this little hollow down in here. And so the next time I want to paint a tree, my hand and my brain are going to talk to each other. Here's another one. I was just practicing, and this again is just watercolor paper. Um, I wanted to get to where the light was coming here and that this was going to be brighter. I wanted that rounded look uh, to see some depth in that. So I, all this down in here is really for me just to enjoy. And this is just practicing again, doing this kind of thing, this kind of grass and getting uh, depth and all of that. But so you can see, again, here's our shadow, our trees this way, and we got all this going on down here. So rocks, rocks are a hard thing in landscapes. <laughs> so this is, and I, I, I just realized this, this is a, a piece of mat board, and I, I had cut out a mat, and I, the back of it sort of kind of got goobered up, so I couldn't really use it to make cut another mat out of this size. So I drew a square, cut it in half, and I practice rocks. Okay, so here's number one. Here was two. Here was three. Here was four. This is telling me where the light's coming from in each one. And I'm just practicing trying to get something, some realistic looking rocks and seeing how to do that. And then this is just, this is a um, uh, canvas mat, a canvas board. And um, I, you know, I was practicing rocks again and reflections. So not only have I got the rocks, I've got some trees, some grasses, and I'm looking at perspective of how to show that this is not the same color as back in there, how to get some reeds and, and seat those rocks down in there, do some waterfalls, and then just some big, um, big rocks. So the next time you look at somebody else's artwork and think, oh, they are so talented. They, 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 it just oozes out of them. And I don't, I don't have that. That's, that's not true. Every single artist does this kind of stuff. Some artists, it comes easier for, but for the most part, it's a skill. And once you practice and learn a skill, you can improve that skill it, with more work. With more work, you can always get better. And so I, I, I hesitate uh, to tell you how often I practice or how much I practice, but um, I also don't want to give anybody the false uh, impression that it's only talent. They're so talented and I'm not talented. That's not what happened. It's really just not. It's skill. And skill can be learned, it can be practiced, and it can be improved. So thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. 
And uh, hey, let's paint together real soon. See you later. It's coming, it's coming. The Beginner Painting Club is coming. And I want you in on the ground floor. If you wanna to learn to paint, this is gonna be perfect for you because it's gonna open up and in every month you'll get new information about painting with acrylics and drawing, improving your art skills through all sorts of different ways. So you be keep liking my page, Painting with Acrylics 101.com, our Facebook page. And then I'm going to keep inf putting the information out there and you'll be aware of when it's going to go online, when you can sign up. And I can't wait to get you in here and to help you get started on your journey. Thanks a lot. Painting with Acrylics 101.com. See you. Let's paint together soon.